Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having an amazing day. Today we're going to get started with some news from NVIDIA as we have a yet more news coming out about an RTX 3080 Ti for mobile. Now this new information is thanks to Matthew Smith, a maintainer of the Tech Power Up GPU and GPU-Z database, and according to him, NVIDIA is now working on a new flagship mobile GPU by the name of, you guessed it, the RTX 3080 Ti. Now I'm sure many of you are sitting there going, huh, this all sounds awfully familiar, and it definitely should. This is far from the first time that we've heard this particular rumour. In fact, we ourselves revealed this piece of info some time ago now, and you may recall that according to what we heard, we are going to be seeing a reveal of what we were told is called the RTX 30 Super for, mo uh, for mobile at CES 2022, which of course is going to be in January. Now, back to Matthew's information for the moment, according to him, we're going to be seeing the GA103 chip being used, but we do not know the exact configuration of this model. Now, for those of you wondering, okay, that's all great and all, but where did he get this information from? Well, videocards.com decided to take some initiative and actually reach out to him. Of course, you can find their article linked in the description below. Now, according to what he told them, the name originated from the PCI device ID database, where someone by the name of Faint Snow submitted a code codename GN20-E8 to an ID of 2420, and that codename was later updated by, to GA103 by the same person, and then just a few days ago, the product name GeForce RTX 3080 Ti Laptop GPU for this ID was posted in that very same database. Now obviously, we should take anything that's rumour or speculation, anything not from the mouth of NVIDIA in this case, with lots of salt TM. But it's still pretty damn interesting, especially Kieran, that this is, again, far from the first time we've heard this. You know, we've reported this, and there's been various leaks. You know, we heard that it was called the RTX 3080 Super. There's been rumours that it's going to be the RTX 3080 Ti. And there's even some saying that it's going to be the RTX 3090 for mobile. At this stage, it's tough to say whether or not we're talking about multiple new high-end SKUs or the same graphics card, only with three different names. Again, we were told that it was called the RTX 3080 super but here it's once again appearing under the 3080 ti and it's probably going to appear again as the super at some point as well still if our reports are true that we're going to be learning all about this at ces next year we don't have to wait all that long at all before we actually learn what's going on here in terms of you know final specs price blah blah blah, blah all that good stuff but with that said, we're going to move on now to AMD. Specifically, we're going to discuss RDNA 3. I'm sure you'd all agree that RDNA 3 has been sounding pretty damn exciting in all the recent leaks, rumours, exclusives that we've discovered, and so on. And I can't wait to see what we have in store in terms of, you know, the specs, performance gains, and so on and so on. And according to Grayman55 on Twitter, who should need no introduction at this point, the next-gen flagship GPUs have been taped out. And obviously the tape-out process is important to actually bring the GPU to market, but there are still a ways to go before it actually can be. For those of you not in the know, taped out basically means that the design has been finished. Now we are still potentially going to see changes, however, as bugs are discovered and fixed through various engineering iterations and whatnot, but the actual design has been finalised and obviously we can now move on to things like, you know, first wafer production where AMD will actually begin testing, which I think is going to be really, really crucial and I think we're going to get a lot of interesting leaks and so on about this because obviously Navi 31 of the RDNA 3 SKUs is going to be AMD's first MCM or multi-chip module design. So I think it's not going to be a boring time when it comes to RDNA 3. I think we're all going to be really interested to see how RDNA 3 progresses throughout all the engineering iterations and whatnot. Assuming there are any leaks, there very well may not be. But either way, I look forward to seeing exactly what AMD have in store for us here. Now, obviously, in terms of rumours, we have been hearing that the chip is going to be manufactured on the TSMC N5 and N6 process technology, but AMD obviously haven't commented on this yet. And you may have missed our video from earlier this month where we discussed the TFLOP performance of Navi 31, and if you did indeed miss that, you will find it linked in the description below. But with that said, let's move on to our next topic, which is actually regarding Samsung. Now, obviously, this year and some of last year have been absolutely plagued with hardware shortages. And as I've said numerous times at this point, I don't want to go too much into this. It's a very complex topic, and there's numerous moving parts that have all contributed to the situation that we're all currently in. But obviously... 
a lot of the production at the moment is being handled by TSMC and more competition in that area could definitely bring some relief and Samsung is definitely obviously a competitor to TSMC but they have about 17% market share in the foundry business whereas TSMC has a staggering 53% market share but Samsung is not keen to let this stand they have recently said that they wish to triple their chip production efforts which is pretty damn crazy and for those of you wondering what their goal year is for this it is going to be 2026 so obviously it's not going to be something that affects us tomorrow but obviously if Samsung can become more competitive and we're not relying so much on just TSMC you know the amount of companies that actually use them for their various nodes like you know AMD and Qualcomm and god knows how many others I think to be honest some much needed competition in the foundry business will obviously be good for everyone even though it's not tomorrow it's still something that could obviously will benefit us eventually and Samsung's efforts are not just limited to their home in South Korea but have extended to the US as well. You may have seen the recent reports that they're finalizing a plant in Texas and Samsung have made it clear that they are ambitious. They've said that they want to gain the edge in mobile and take out Qualcomm and Apple and now they're obviously looking to gain some ground against TSMC and you know this applies for GPUs and CPUs as well but competition is only a good thing for us to consumers even if TSMC is still in the lead. Obviously, if Samsung is close behind their heels, we will see you know, more manufacturers pushing forward to bring cutting its chips or the market, or giving options to other companies, and obviously relying on a single manufacturer does stifle competition. But we're actually going to hop back for a moment to discuss AMD's Epic, as we have news on Epic Turin. And this is allegedly going to be a Zen 5 based epic, so this is not coming anytime soon, given that obviously Zen 3 is Milan, Zen 4, which hasn't even out yet, is Genoa, and Turin is expected in 2023, maybe 2024. So we are definitely looking far ahead into the future here. Now, you may have seen the tweet from Grayman the other day where he gave some information on the configurations that we can expect for Zen 5 epic, and allegedly we should see two configurations 192c 384t and then to 56c and 512t but just about that you'll see in a tweet from executable fix and according to him turin is going to have a max cdtdp of a staggering 600 watts now for those of you going well duh it's server Yes, it is, but it is still a significant increase when compared to Milan, which has a maximum C TDP of 280 watts. And the Zen 4 Genoa based epics are rumored to have a C TDP of 400 watts. So this is a pretty significant increase in power demands. Now, obviously, with a chip that is so far in the future, this is by no means set in stone. And obviously, as with any rumor, it could definitely be incorrect. But it is still interesting that we are allegedly going to be seeing such a high peak requirement. Now obviously we can safely assume that we are going to be seeing some performance and specification improvements alongside these power gains. AMD obviously promised very recently that they are going to be doing some serious power efficiency. AMD claims 30 times energy efficiency by 2025 and I'm sure this goal is something they take very very seriously so by no means is the power requirements the complete story here. Either way for technology lovers such as myself and hopefully you guys as well if you're watching this video it is very exciting times ahead i'm really looking forward to seeing what everyone has in store for us at cex ces excuse me next year uh, really hoping we get to see a lots about you know nvidia's plans amd's plans even if we only get hints of what's coming for you know long-awaited things like rtx 40 and rma 3 I'm still looking forward to 2022. I think it's going to be a really interesting time in tech and hopefully we can finally start to put these shortages behind us. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, do remember to like and subscribe to us about a great deal and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.